First thing when I wake up, I synchronize my Aura sleep tracker ring to my phone and gather all my sleep data from the night before, which lets me know how well rested I am, how deep I slept, the quality of sleep, so I can analyze how my experiment went that night of the substances that I take to try to sleep better. Now, every night, lately, I'm taking the enhanced sleep juice, which helps me sleep much deeper, much higher quality, and I oftentimes stack it with other things. Sometimes I use it by itself, and then sometimes I don't use it, and I just use other compounds to experiment with. Sleep quality and length of sleep makes a massive difference for fat loss. I mean, absolutely huge. I burn more fat in my sleep than I do any other time of day, so that's why it's so important to know how good my sleep quality is, because it's a variable in determining how well what I did yesterday did impacted my fat loss, how my metabolism is. Next thing I do is go to the bathroom and use my bidet to spray my uh, <laughs> digestive system out, clean out, so that I can do an assessment in the mirror to see how uh, I'm looking as far as water retention, fat, muscle fullness, which gives me all the data I need to analyze uh, wh how what I did affected my body and what I can do today. For example, um, I thought my metabolism was slowing down because I was so bloated, but I cleaned out. My waist is tight. I feel dry. I feel like my metabolism is actually going very fast, which means I can get away with eating more calories today, or I can get away with fasting harder without crashing my metabolism as much. I'm getting my back shaved right now because I want to see the muscle definition. I want any hair blocking my ability to see the progress I'm making today. I can burn fat so fast. It's not just water, actual fat. In one day, I can lose a very noticeable amount of fat, so I want to be able to shave see how I look this morning and then check how I look tomorrow morning to see how effective my get shredded protocol for today was. To eat or not to eat, that is the question. So intermittent fasting and fasting are very effective for fat loss, but there is a risk of muscle loss. The more muscle that I have and the faster my metabolism is and the, the worse my genetics are for holding on to a lot of muscle and I have the genetics of an extreme Olympic endurance athlete according to my ge uh, genetic report, not the genetics of a bodybuilder. Normally for breakfast, and I also have a lot of carbs, like I would eat a, four pieces of gluten-free toast with jam, for example. But the difference today, because today is a get shredded day, I'm gonna eat a lot less carbs today. I'm still gonna eat carbs after my workout, but I'm not gonna eat carbs before, uh, before breakfast. So that means I'm gonna go into the gym feeling a little bit depleted. I'm gonna have less energy and less power to lift weights in the repetition ranges where glucose, glycogen, is the primary fuel source. Jamie, you haven't eaten anything yet. It's an extreme shredding day. Are you eating anything this morning? Um, no, I'm still fasting. I'm about to pop some ECA shred. And then are we gonna do sauna, cardio? I think we'll go straight to the gym. Sounds good. Yeah. I woke up really hungry. I'm already going to be burning through muscle. I know most people don't have to worry about that. Most people, uh, as metabolism aren't that fast, that they're going to lose muscle that quickly. And they can benefit a lot from intermittent fasting and fasting. So I'm going to actually eat, but I'm going to eat a light, healthy bodybuilding breakfast. I cracked the egg by dropping it with gravity onto the, the, the counter because then it creates a blunt force trauma that the pieces of the egg shatter into large pieces so they can't end up small and in the pan. Pink Himalaya sea salt. We're going to need more salt because if we're dieting and eating less food and less carbs, our muscles are going to deflate. They're going to lose water. The salt will help keep our muscles fuller. And then pepper, I don't use for the nutritive benefit, I just use it for the, the flavor and the look. And then cinnamon, sometimes a little cinnamon does have some nutritive benefit, but mainly it's just a taste like, it makes it taste like French toast, just a little bit. I make two drinks. I'm gonna make an all day shred drink, which is sort of like my morning juice. That's gonna help me burn fat all day. I'm gonna take a couple servings of this throughout the day. This is one of the key supplements I'm gonna use for extreme fat loss. 
and then I'm making a coffee drink because the all day shred doesn't have any stimulants in it. It's a stimulant free fat burner. It has everything I need to burn fat except for the stimulants. So in the morning, I stack it with the stimulants and then in the uh, evening, I'll still take the all day shred but I won't take it with stimulants because I don't want the stimulants to interfere with sleep because sleep is the most effective time to burn fat. If I take stimulants anytime near sleep, even though I think I'm sleeping deeper, I'm actually not, and I'm actually not burning as much fat. For the coffee drink, I put in uh, one scoop of just regular freeze-dried coffee and one scoop of raw cocoa powder with no sugar, nothing added, with a little tiny squirt of stevia. Usually I use powder, but this one's a liquid version, just to give it a little sweetness. <coughs> and I will add just some random protein powder to make it a little bit more creamy. This is the all day shred. It's, this is about how much water I put with it. It tastes like fruit punch, but like a natural fruit punch, not like a chemical fruit punch, which is perfect because in the morning with my food, well, actually every time I eat food, I crave a fruity drink. While I'm eating, I like to look at inspirational pictures for whatever my goal is. So since today's a get shredded day, I look at some of my friend Joe Aesthetics pictures and see how shredded he is and know that I'm going to be filming with him in a few months, so I got to look shredded like him. And then I look at some of my older pictures from uh, the old days back when I used to be more shredded and less huge and get me inspired and also remember that it's possible and, and what it feels like to be that shredded and how disciplined I was back then because I hate dieting so much. But when I see the goal of looking at my friend's pictures or my old pictures and see what I'm capable of when I'm disciplined, then it helps me find that discipline again. I'm taking four black ox in the morning and four black ox in the evening. Now I'm enhanced, I use other supplements so that where I don't need to worry about my natural testosterone production, but I still take this to maintain some level of natural for testosterone production and because it gives me all the precursors for all the other hormones in my body that work synergistic with hormones uh, like testosterone. And then if I was natural also, when we're dieting or we're shredding, our natural testosterone levels oftentimes lowers. And so that's why it's helpful when we're dieting to take supplements that keep our metabolism going faster and the testosterone is one and the other because the all day shred has things that support thyroid. So we keep our hormones up to keep our metabolism up despite dieting and the calories coming down. I'm taking two carterine, which is 20 milligrams. I only take carterine, which is GW501516 on days that I'm shredding or I'm seriously limiting calories because the main reason I use it for is to increase my endurance. So days that I would do a lot of cardio or really long workouts uh, and days that I want to help my body switch to fat burning mode from burning glycogen as a primary fuel source. At 37, my metabolism wouldn't be this fast if I didn't have this much muscle. One of the keys to burning fat quickly or making fat burning easy is to have more muscle mass. There's always the question of what's better? Should I shred first or should I bulk first? Generally, I like to bulk first, build a little bit more muscle because that speeds up the metabolism. That, that muscle, that extra muscle you're holding burns fat 24 hours a day. Pre-workout, I'm putting on the fire gel on the areas that I wanna burn the fat most, which uh, the only places that I really care about to burn fat. I mean, yeah, sure, a little bit over the whole body, but it's easy to burn the rest of the body fat with the oral supplements. I use the cream for the ab area and the lower back area. That's where it's really hard to burn fat. With my post-workout meal, I'm gonna drink one scoop of anabolic IV because I always like drinking something sweet that tastes good. With a, with a meal, and because it has the essential amino acids and all the nutrients I need to build and repair post-workout. Workout meal, so the anabolic IV and the 20 grams of organ protein shake that I had post-workout give me the fast amino acids I need. This is gonna give me the steady trickle of amino acids into my bloodstream and therefore my muscles with very, very lean ground beef. So this is very low fat um, because it's a shredding day, and this is a gluten-free, bread and it's not a ton of carbs. So a little bit of carbs good for post-workout, keep my metabolism up, 
But again, the slim pills are gonna help shuttle these in the muscles so fast that my blood sugar is not gonna rise. My post-workout meal, I'm gonna have two slim pills. That's a low dosage of slim pills, but I'm also not eating a lot of carbs. This will be enough to keep my blood sugar low as if I didn't even eat the carbs. So I have the benefits of spiking my metabolism by eating the carbs post-workout and also giving my muscle more nutrients to rebuild bigger and faster. Uh, but also the benefit of keeping my blood sugar lower so I can remain in the fat burning zone the rest of the day. Jamie's post-workout meal is asparagus, cashews, and salmon. Carefully selecting my workout shoes for the day, I need something that's uh, firm enough in case I decide to do some leg exercises, but also cushion enough and tight enough if I wanna do a lot of cardio. And here's today's shoe choice. So you're obviously not doing the shredding protocol with us today with your Lucky Charms for breakfast, are you? <laughs> <laughs> Jamie, what are you going to do for your stimulant approach? So I already took the ECA shred, you know, it has some caffeine in it. So we got some high stim pre-workout, you know. And um, I think I might also drink an energy drink because I'm crazy like that. Whoa, a lot of stimulants. The key also is to sleep really deeply to resensitize yourself to the stimulants and because the stimulants can interfere with sleep. So did you take the sleep juice last night? I actually took two scoops of this last night and it knocked me out. Out look alive. For pre-workout, I'm just gonna take the Code Red Fat Burner because it's got all the stimulant-based ingredients I need to burn the most amount of fat. Now I could stack this with the pre-workout, but I'm pretty sensitive to stimulants lately, so I'm gonna choose one or the other. Now there is the Enhanced Rage Pump that has no stimulants, uh, and normally I would use that, maybe a scoop of Rage Pump plus a scoop of Rage High Stim. But today I, I don't wanna keep the stimulants so high pre-workout right in the morning because I'm gonna be using a little bit of stimulants all day for increased fat burning. So I'm just gonna do pre-workout the Code Red Fat Burner. Today I'm documenting like the perfect shred day. My fat burner for today before I go to the gym is Slim and Ishe Shred. They work amazing stacked together. Like my concept, more is better. I'm getting ready to go to the gym and I have my pre-workout ready. But then I'm also gonna make sure this, mix that in my shaker and while I'm working out, I'm usually drinking this while working out, and also while doing cardio, I'll be drinking it. This is my pre-workout that I have mixed. Mixed this a little bit ago. And can name this one. Stim free for the pump. And then this one for the energy. Yeah, because I love that energy. You usually do like one scoop. I feel like a scoop and a half or two. I always overdo everything. I have the whole more is better problem. difference the more you breathe the more fat you can burn because the difference between anaerobic and aerobic exercise anaerobic meaning doesn't need oxygen like weightlifting and aerobic meaning requires oxygen in order to make use of the fat and convert the fat into energy so it's only logical that the more oxygen you have available the more fat you can burn now, I know there's scientific studies out there that show that just force breathing yourself more throughout the day doesn't necessarily burn more fat but in the context of exercising I do believe that if you give your body more oxygen and you breathe more then you're giving your body more resources to burn more fat instead of carbohydrate Here's a 
big difference between our metabolisms. She's able to build muscle easier and hold on to muscle easier because her genetics. I have more endurance genetics. I lose muscle easier. I go catabolic easier. So she's able to work out really hard. Like she doesn't even rest between sets. She'll work out for two hours straight, alternating between uh, like an exercise like this and doing squats, like between legs and upper body. And she's in such good condition that she can manage the blood flow going between both. So you have to understand how your metabolism is, whether you're an ectomorph, mesomorph, or endomorph. And if you're like her, who's able to put on fat and muscle easier, then you, have, you can afford to, and you should work out a lot harder and a lot longer. Whereas if you're like me, who's an ectomorph, who loses fat easy, but also loses muscle easy, we have to work out for shorter, more intense, uh, and we also have to pull back before we start breaking down muscle. For the weights workout, we focus on one general muscle group, but we hit every muscle in every workout while we're trying to get shredded. The reason why is we're stimulating the muscle cells to be very sensitive to insulin. Our insulin levels are gonna be much lower. We're activating the GLUT4 receptor, which is causing our muscles to be like hungry, hungry hippos to scoop out the calories, the carbs and the fat from our bloodstream, All right? The more muscle cells that we activate, the more hungry, hungry hippos we have pulling those calories from our bloodstream because there's three sides to the fat loss equation. There's uh, not putting on the fat in the, fir the first place, there's releasing the fat, and then there's uh, burning the fat, right? So, so we, we take these supplements, we have stimulants, things like that to release the fat. We wanna stimulate the muscle cells to pull the fat from the bloodstream and the carbs from the bloodstream, any calories, and then to burn them. So we want to stimulate each muscle every day. I think the most craziest part is, is that I'm 150 pounds and I have abs. One of our secrets to extremely rapid fat burning is that we keep our metabolism high. So we don't do too many consecutive days of shredding. I know most people want to shred for like six weeks straight, right? But what happens is every day that you shred, metabolism slows a little bit more. Now the all day shred definitely helps keep the metabolism up. So it counteracts some of that, but not completely. But we're, today we're doing a get shredded day. See yesterday we didn't diet, we didn't do anything for fat loss. So our metabolism is really high, which means today it creates even more of a caloric deficit because we're burning a ton of calories, our metabolism being high, and we're eating a lot less calories. And, uh, so, and our glycogen levels are, are more full than if we had dieted the previous days. So combine all that and we can burn a tremendous amount of fat in one day. How does this apply to you guys? Well, if you guys are going to do shredding, I recommend you throw in a day of bulking or a day off from shredding to get your metabolism up. One way to do this is to cycle carbohydrates. So on your shredding days, you can do very low carbohydrates or even no carbohydrates, but then you throw in a day of carbohydrates, preferably after the workout. Like today, I'm gonna have carbs after the workout. And that gets your metabolism up higher so that the following day and that night, your body's burning way more calories. What I mean is you can work out really intense and not break down muscle. But if you work out for a long period of time, then you break down muscle. So in order to give the most amount of stimulation to preserve muscle with the least amount of catabolism of breaking down muscle, that's why when we're dieting, we keep the workouts shorter and more intense. Oh, but you can do cardio for a long time, but it has to be very low intensity cardio so you're burning fat, not carbs. Because if you're burning carbs, if you're burning glycogen, and then you run out of glycogen, then your body shifts to burning muscle for fuel. But if you're burning fat, then you just keep burning more and more fat. And you burn fat in more of the low intensity, steady state sort of cardio. But then there's high intensity interval training followed by steady state, the ultimate way to burn fat. The reason why is when you do very short, intense exercise, your body releases a lot of fat. And then you do the steady state to burn that fat. So why am I weightlifting when I'm trying to shred? Why am I not just doing cardio? Well, it's because your body is gonna burn what it doesn't need. So if you are weightlifting, then you're telling your body, you're telling your muscles that I need you muscles to survive. For some reason, I'm taxing my muscles, so I need you to preserve the muscle. And then the harder you diet, the harder it gets to train harder. So a lot of people lose muscle, not necessarily because they're going catabolic, 
but because they're not giving their body, their muscles, the message that, hey, we need to retain and we need to stay on top of muscles. The difference when we're shredding is our workouts usually need to be harder and shorter. So it takes a lot more mental energy, stamina, focus uh, mentally. So that's why things like the stimulants and, and pre-workouts help a lot when dieting. That way you have the energy to push harder because it's easy to do a long three hour workout, low intensity, right? But it's hard to muster up that energy to push the intensity in a shorter period of time. And if we work out for too long, then we go catabolic, then we start burning muscle. It's more about the length of time working out than it is about the intensity. So it's a trade off. I can aggressively burn a lot more fat if I push my body harder and I diet harder, but then I'm going to be burning more muscle for the long term that's not a good idea. If I wanna burn as much fat in one day as possible, of course, I would fast and I would work out really hard and I'd burn a ton of fat, but I'd lose muscle and my metabolism would crash, which means I'd have a lot harder time building muscle or burning fat the next day and the day after that. So I'm not gonna push it really hard today because I don't wanna slow my metabolism down. I wanna go to bed tonight, my metabolism still be high, not be in a catabolic state, preserve the muscle that I do have and burn the fat. I'll do 20 minutes on the Stairmaster and Jamie's gonna do 20 minutes on the incline treadmill. Now the more intense the cardio we do and we're not eating very many carbohydrates, the more likely we are gonna start breaking down muscle. Now I can tell when I start breaking down muscle because I can smell the ammonia on my breath which is a byproduct of breaking down amino acids to get glycogen out. She puts the fire gel on while she's doing cardio. She's putting it on her hamstrings and glutes and then she's putting it on her abdomen and she's even putting it on her shoulders so she's pretty much looking to burn fat from everywhere although the hardest places to burn fat are the abs lower back and legs so that's where she put the most on spent the most time rubbing it in So Drew's 226 pounds. Right now I weigh 228 because I dropped my calories down, I lost some weight. So this gives you an idea of what I would look like if I shredded down. But Drew's got a tighter waist than me too. Uh, but his legs, your legs shrunk a lot during this prep. You're gonna, yeah. you gotta try and fill them out before the competition. Yep, we're gonna try to fill them out. If I'm getting hungry and I'm dieting and I need to feel satiated, this is really helpful, this ripple is made from pea protein and I drink it and it's kind of satisfying because it's, it's thicker, it's creamier, and yet it's got no sugar. This is the unsweetened version. If I want to make it a little sweeter, I can just add a little stevia. So I've decided to eat a second bowl of cereal, which now is considered a cheat meal for today. So I'm mitigating it by taking two more slim pills. Doesn't count then. <laughs> so she's eating another meal of uh, salmon, cashews, and green beans and I'm eating a meal of cereal, but I'm keeping the sugar really low. Check this out. I'm using the pea protein milk, which has no sugar, no carbs, and I'm eating just a little bit of rice checks, and surprisingly, Lucky Charms has uh, really low sugar as far as kids' cereal, so a little bit of this gives it a lot of flavor. It's only 10 grams of sugar per serving. Now this is still the ultimate shredding day and Drew came over to visit who's competing in nationals in six days. So he's really shredded. Let's find out from him what he thinks the perfect shredding day is using legal supplements, diet and training. So first of all, with the training, if you want to shred as much body fat in one day, what type of training? I do, do like high intensity, a lot of supersets right now. Um, a lot of, uh, just uh, not a lot of weight, just a lot of, a lot of volume. A lot of high reps. Um, I, in the morning, I wake up, I do your fasted cardio. Then I do use um, muscle gels, uh, fire gel. That's really been 
get my midsection a lot tighter. Um, then uh, right now we're, what did I say, we're six days. Six days, so we're water loading right now. So um, what's the what's the carbohydrate strategy on a get shredded day? Um, we're 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 a little low right now. We're a little low. Uh, I did have some oatmeal, um, this morning, and I had some cream of rice and a half a cup of rice. That's been my carbs all day because uh, we didn't notice yesterday morning. I was I was a little flat, and last night after working out, I was still a little flat. So what we did is we um. We integrated a little bit more carbs today. So hopefully now's the process where we, you know, start trying to get the water out, get shredded, but start probably up in the carbs a little bit to fill the muscle out. As the water comes out, fill it up with carbs. And when you're doing the cardio in the morning, what type of cardio are you doing and how long and at what intensity? Um, right now we actually kicked it down a little bit. I'm just doing 20 minutes on a bike. But uh, for the most part, it was... Um, 20 to 25 minutes on the stepper at at least 8.3. Is the reason that you keep the weights intensity and the cardio intensity lower because you're not giving your body enough calories to recover from yes. it and there's a risk of overtraining and your metabolism actually crashing? Absolutely. Um, if you overtrain right now, you, you people have to realize at five or six days out, I don't have enough calories in me to build the muscle. What I want to do is get in there still move the blood to these muscles, fill them up, get that little bit of pump I can get, and then that's all you really gotta do.